Hello, welcome at Maidan TV. Um, today our guest uh, is Viola von Kramann, uh, former German MP and former co-chairman of South Caucasus uh, parliamentary group in German Bundestag. Uh, welcome, Viola. Hello. Thank you for coming for very, to Maidan TV. Very nice to be here. Um, uh, I actually uh, would like to start with with elections. I mean, you have, uh, you know, Azerbaijan now since several years, you are working uh, in our region, you had visits, Azerbaijan. Uh, what is election for you in Azerbaijan? I mean, after leaving this position, uh, after visiting Azerbaijan, reading a lot about what's going on in our country, what do you have to say about the nature of elections in Azerbaijan? Well, um, Originally, of course, elections should be to express the free and fair will of the voters. And um, what I've discovered in Azerbaijan for the last four years, there is no free and uh, fair election and there's no free and uh, voters' will. Um, and so, to be honest, I didn't see a chance to really reach a level of... Uh, good and free and fair elections and that's why I didn't I didn't go to observe these elections because there's actually a waste of time to go and then to see um, the result in advance yeah you see ahead already what should be the result which is determined by President Aliyev and his guys and I don't think that's not worth going there and spending my time for nothing. That's why I decided not to go. But I was actually, I was always fighting for other standards of democracy. I was always trying to push uh, opposition parties, trying to get um, another development, even in parliament, fighting with some, let's say, more or less independent um, politicians and really try to strengthen them. But at that time, right now, there's no chance that you get um, anything like real elections. Especially. So uh, you're, you didn't want to waste your time, basically, with uh, observing the rigged elections. Uh, uh, but uh, I, when, when, when it was the first time you came uh, to Azerbaijan, like, is it... Uh, and, and, and also, what, uh, what was striking you? I mean, now after you leave the post, besides elections, which was the topic of many interviews and talks now um, at Maidan TV as well, uh, what is striking you so much in Azerbaijan during your first visit and now after you spent so many years um, dealing with Azerbaijan, with the region? What is, you know... To be honest, I was very positive. Before I um, went the first time, it was in spring 2010, I was very well informed. I met with the ambassador here. I got a visa without any problem. I got meetings with high-ranking officials, with still the uh, former Ministry for Foreign Affairs, and so on and so forth. So I was very much welcomed. But I was discovered very fast there's a limit. Yeah, There's a limit of openness. There's a limit of things you can say, there's a limit of um, people you can meet and how you, you're you being, let's say, um, um, yeah, limited in, 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 in your own, um, not thoughts, but in that what is actually possible to change. And what was really striking for me was I talked to different people from the Ministry for uh, youth and education and culture and also from for parliamentarians and um, there is what I what I found out is a, is a real bad and poor educational system schooling system uh, university system not that the Soviet system was um, ideal far away from that but at least it was a broader access for people to really reach a substantial um, level of education. So did you find out that the sons and daughters of the ministers or president go to local schools and universities? No, yes, of course I found out that all of the sons and daughters of the ministry and of the political elite were sent abroad. So they enjoyed the life in freedom, yeah? They enjoyed the life in Paris or London or New York or wherever, yeah? Very costly very privileged uh, school system, yeah, 
But instead of changing and improving the school system, the university system uh, in, in their country, the elite sends their own kids abroad. Yeah? And for me, that was so unfair. I couldn't believe it. And the corruption, the level of corruption in the Azerbaijani educational system is huge. So you never know. That's what I've heard also from people from the business um, circle and from the economical spheres, especially the investors from the West. They want to employ people and they want to have a guarantee that that what the people have on the paper, they can yeah they 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 can deal with. Mm. But because of the corruption in the system, you never know what you get. Yeah, you mm. get people with um, good marks, but there's nothing behind that. So I would really recommend, and I did, to the government, do your first step and really build up a better educational system for your people. Um, because if oil and gas will be off, will be out, yeah, there's nothing you can, you can live on. Mm. The, I remember um, you visited me personally in jail. It was uh, 2010, right? Uh, in a correctional facility, how it's called, number five. Um, uh, so it was your first visit to Azerbaijan, right, back then? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what, how, how did you, did you, was it your first visit in jail ever? Or have you visited jails in other countries or? I was, I think there was the first real jail was it? I, I'm not sure whether whether I was in in Ukraine before in '96, in a kind of yeah pre jail and court uh, arresting uh, arresting place. But nevertheless, it was interesting that they gave me the opportunity because they didn't let go the special envoy for human rights before the German one. They didn't let other MPs to go and, and visit you. So I was the only one. I was the first one. And of course, they tried to build up obstacles. Yeah, They sent you before 140 kilometers south of Baku and said, well, you have to drive like two hours to see him. Are you sure you really they want They thought it? you would refuse. Absolutely. And they offered me other meetings with high-ranking officials and people from the government. I said, no, 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 I rather would like to see Emin instead of, um, of people from the government or representatives. So then finally, I think we made it. And uh, it was a very interesting talk. And even the guy from the jail, the, the director of the jail, was very friendly to us. And he was very, um, a little bit unsecure what was really behind our visit. He couldn't mm -hmm. really imagine that I was interesting in how, how you're doing. But um, finally, we had, a, we had a great talk and we had a great uh, visit after you, we have seen you. And I never regretted that we did it because then we started a very good relationship. But by the way, that uh, friendly director of jail, I heard later after I was released that he was jailed. But not because of me or anything, but for some other uh, oh, oh, stories. Oh, interesting. So, okay. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, I mean, uh, I was reading your posts and your... Um, discussions and comments and interviews sometimes you give uh, about the situation uh, in, in South Caucasus region and in Azerbaijan and and you are uh, you're quite you became quite pessimistic about what concerns perspectives of democratic change in Azerbaijan um, um, could you share those thoughts with us and what do you believe is needed so the democratic change in Azerbaijan and in the region, you know, uh, can happen. Mm. Yeah, before I went the first time, to be honest, I was very neutral. I was very open. I was hoping to find, yeah, more people like you, a new generation, which was acting at the edge of uh, yeah, uh, democra uh, <clears throat> democratic development and you could work on and you see, well, this is not just, um, they, they're not just having economical material uh, wealth uh, in, in mind, but they really want to see some political changes. And then I found out this is a minority and even this minority has to shut up because it is really hard to survive 
for young politicians or for journalists or for people who are not in the mainstream because this ruling current regime is so brutal and so repressive and they even targeted me. I mean this all this blackmailing in Russian and in English you find about me in the in the internet. This is disgusting. I've never had things like that. I was always playing fair, yeah. I, I sent press release, but this is a normal, let's say, democratic procedure to send press release about the situation in Azerbaijan. But what they did with me is really ten pages of dirty stories about nothing. I mean, there was nothing true in that, and I couldn't defend myself because it is just it's, it's a shame what what this system was doing against me and I always tried to build bridges I always went back and gave them yeah my hand and say well come on let's let's do it and let's try to find a common language to work together and the next time they turn around and kick you in the ass and I was completely disappointed and that's why I don't see right now I don't see any chance to work together with them not in a political sense. There might be some business circle, there might be some investors being happy in Baku, investing money, being corrupted by this by this system. But for me as a as a politician, what should I do? With whom should I work? There's no nobody. Thank you Viola for coming to our studio and sharing with us your thoughts. Thank you uh, for watching us and see you at next program at Made on TV.